If there had not been a night at the opera, a day at the races, and duck soup, and room service, and coconuts, and animal crackers, and a few other films, uh, the world would be a much worse place to live in. Uh, the word great is tossed around a lot, and the word giant, but uh, my next guest is one of the greats and one of the giants. Will you welcome, please, the one, the only, Groucho Marx. <laughs> for much better purposes. <laughs> I have a few sex stories that I'd like to tell you. <laughs> as soon as he leaves the stage. I, uh, How are you? I, I, it's very How nice to you. I'm fine. did you find things in, in London? Uh, they were fine. The fog lifted and there they were. Uh, isn't that a, an old joke? How did you, uh, uh, how did you find yes. London? I'm so accustomed to old jokes, I don't even pay any attention anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help noticing your hat, which uh, you've worn <laughs> more than once here. I, I, I wear that because there was a time where the hair was receding so swiftly mm -hmm. and I wore a toupee. And I, I saw that. myself on the show once wearing a toupee. It was ridiculous. Just a big, greasy-looking, smooth spot up there. Yeah. There's no point to that. So I had a, I used this hat actually to play golf. Yeah. Is I it can a tell you a golf story if you'd like to hear it. Well, I wouldn't mind that. It's a... Uh, I'm not crazy about it, but... Uh. <laughs> yeah, you, don't have, you don't have to. I, I, who gave you the hat? I was just wondering uh, whose taste I that bought is. it at the Hillcrest Country Club. You did? Yeah, I yeah. think I paid about two and a half bucks for it. They had seen me play mm -hmm. and decided that I'd need the appropriate costume for the way I played golf. <laughs> That's this it. is true, and I've worn yeah. it ever since. But I tell you why. I always say to the man who runs the show, the man who obstructs it, I mean, that uh, I always ask them to ask me why I wear this. Uh -huh. Because otherwise it looks like you're coming out just to see how funny you can be. I and don't know why I think that's would... ridiculous, you know. Yeah. The average grown-up person shouldn't have to wear a hat with three balls on it. <laughs> <laughs> I think... Aren't oh, they? yeah, there are three. I thought well, for a moment three, there yeah. were not. I had not um, but one of them's I didn't mean it for a dirty story. No, I? I'm sure you didn't, no. <laughs> because I don't tell dirty stories. I feel very sensitive about that subject. You've said that before. If this that is you, true, and you, I'd, uh... like to, I'd like to talk about it for a couple of minutes. Well, no, I'm know. serious. There's a sure. show in town, I understand, where they practically do the sex act on the stage. I don't want to identify the name of the show. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you all know about it. There's more than one. Well, this one was uh, written, I think, by the guy who was the leading dramatic reviewer in London. Designed by him. Designed. That's what they say in the program, designed. Oh, by he didn't him. write it, huh? Well, he wrote some of it. Well, yeah. I, uh, I hadn't seen it. I, had, I was offered the seat to go to see it, but I heard it was filthy and I wouldn't go, that's all. Yeah. Because I think that's, that's too easy, that kind of laughter. Anybody can say something dirty and get a laugh. Mm -hmm. But say something clean and get a laugh. That requires a comedian. <laughs> I wasn't looking at you at the minute. I no, I didn't. <laughs> Although Certainly I had looked you, like you were. No, I had you in mind. <laughs> oh, well, I, I thought I could tell but it. But this is true, and I think it's about time they quit it. Huh. The movies are all dirty. Most of the stage plays on Broadway are dirty. And I think it's all wrong, because it doesn't require talent to be dirty. Be clean and be funny, that's all. But I do think it's had its day. I think they're going to go back to clean movies and clean plays on the stage. You think we're starting into another Victorian age, maybe? Well, that wouldn't be so terrible. No, it wouldn't. I have a feeling that people were... Uh, certainly, sex was more um, desirable then than it is now, because it's, it's like... No, I the, wouldn't say that. I... <laughs> Well, I, 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 
There's something about sex that, uh, you know, but you have to get up so early in the morning. You do? It's hard to catch a train that way. I don't know where well, used to be a joke about that. Oh, is that the punchline of a famous joke? Yes, uh, the, where the, oh, yeah. the uh, husband says to the wife, you and your morning stuff. Mm. That's why you missed the train last week. Oh. I have to explain it more, but it's so dirty, I'm ashamed to say it. <laughs> After what you've just said, you can't tell it. No, but it is really yeah. true. I, I resent those shows and those yeah. movies, and I don't go see them. I saw one. It was called Something About a Housewife with a very good actress in it, and a fellow named Benj Benjamin. Mm -hmm. Dick Benjamin. Dick Benjamin. Carries. And he was very good. He was a, a kind of a lousy husband. Yeah. And to, uh, in order for her to get even, she got another fella. And then they spent 80 minutes of, of the movie in the sack, these two. Well, I'm not interested in that. I don't care what they're doing in the sack. If I'm not doing it, why should I sit in the corner? <laughs> I think you speak no, for the majority of it. I think it's true. I think most people resent mm -hmm. the, the filth that goes on nowadays. Yeah. Well, it's in the common language today. Mm -hmm. You know, in the old days, uh, if there was a party and there were four, men, four women and four men there, at the end of the meal, the men would probably go into another room and tell dirty stories, and there's nothing wrong with that. And the women would probably tell dirty stories in another room, too. <laughs> but they didn't tell them all together, that's yeah. all. There was a kind of a restriction about those things. It still exists in London, because I was over there a couple of years ago, and uh, I was at the ambassador's home many nights. Mm -hmm. The uh, ambassador then, I forget his name. It's not the fellow that is now the American. The, the one before that? Yes. Uh, ambassador that's, Bruce? That's it, a charming guy and a charming. And after dinner, we had a very fancy dinner. A, uh, Kennedy's uh, widow was there, and. A lot of fancy people. And after dinner, when we got through eating, Churchill's daughter was there, Mary, okay. lovely girl. She, oh, I must tell you about her. Oh, yeah? yeah. Well, can you, will it take I long? Because we have to take a message, and then we'll come right no, back. No, I'd be glad not to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Just my luck. Wait a minute. Well, I'll bring you right back to that. Well, anyhow, when yeah. I was in the embassy at their home, and what was his name? Bruce. Bruce. And after dinner, the men would go in one part of the house, and Women would go in the other part, and they'd smoke cigarettes and cigars and tell dirty stories, but they didn't tell them together. Yeah. That's all. And it seems so much nicer if people are going to tell dirty stories to confine themselves to that and leave the men alone and let the men have their own fun in their own shoddy way. <laughs> all right. Fair enough.